If you like it loud, heavy, with just a dash of the occult, then you probably already like Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is considered the very first heavy metal band, and they practically wrote the satanic bible on what it means to be metal. Lyricist and bassist Geezer Butler is a god in the bass world, and he has a very unique and powerful tone. So throw up your horns, paint your pentagram on the floor, and let's see if we can't summon the spirit of Geezer Butler here today. This is How to Sound Like. Now before he was a bass player, Geezer Butler was actually a guitar player before Tony Iommi joined the band. According to Butler, I'd never played bass until I was on stage at the first gig that we played. Borrowed the bass off of one of my friends and it only had three strings on it. There are also anecdotes of him and Tony Iommi being too poor to afford new strings, so they rarely changed them more than like once a year. There were no squires back in the day, so buying an instrument was a pretty hefty investment. The Fender P bass that Geezer eventually bought in 1969 cost him about 250 bucks, which is the equivalent of $1,800 today. Hold up, is that pounds or euros? Or shillings? Dollary dues? I don't know, Brexit's got you guys all kind of messed up. I have no idea what kind of money you use over there. When Black Sabbath arrived at the studio to record their first album, they did everything live in one 12 hour session. Geezer's setup for this session included his Fender Precision, which I've already mentioned, into a Laney 30 watt guitar amp head, into a Park cabinet, which was some sort of guitar cabinet with only three functioning speakers. Geezer didn't have the money to repair the fourth one, and the remaining three speakers were on their way out. Allegedly, some producers were not real impressed with Geezer's sound. Every producer we played to said, you can't have that sound. It's a bass, not a bloody guitar. Roger Bain, the one producer who went, oh yeah, that's a good sound, was the one who got the job. Later on in Geezer's career, his rig grew more expansive as he added more heads and more cabinets, and generally just made everything as big and as loud as possible. In fact, I feel like loudness is just the DNA of his tone. That's like the consistent thing throughout all of his career. I think my favorite little nugget that I discovered while researching all this came from the EMG video. Geezer's guitar tech talks about how he swapped uh, pickups in one of his basses for EMGs, and didn't tell Geezer about it, he just let him play it, and he ended up like really liking it because it was much louder than the other basses and they make a big deal about how the sound engineer was also like yeah that bass is way better than the rest of them because it's louder because louder is better when you're playing metal if you want more detailed information on geezer's rig throughout the years i'll link this video up in the corner he goes into just about everything geezer ever used and it's really really good for my purposes today i'm just going to stick to the first three sabbath albums because i feel like geezer's tone is really unique and special on those albums Essentially, if you have a P bass, a little bit of overdrive, and then play with finger style directly over the end of the neck, you can get pretty close to Geezer's tone. You'll also want to hit the strings really hard, like way harder than you think. There's an interview of Geezer where he talks about getting blisters on his fingers, which is insane for a career bassist. I guess Geezer is just wailing on those things most of the time. So for today, I'm gonna to try a few different ways of recording. I try and make a point of doing this so that you understand that you can use whatever you've got. You don't really need specific gear. As long as you understand the concepts behind things, I think you can get pretty close regardless of what equipment you've got. The bass that I'm gonna be using today is this Parts Precision. It's just a no-name bass that I put together. The important thing though is that it's got flat wound strings on it. I don't know if Geezer was using flat wound strings at the time, but they sound super, super dead. And I feel like this got a little closer than my other P bass, so this is the one that I ended up using for all of the recordings. Also, I'm leaving the volume and tone all the way up. Anyway, these are the settings that I found on my Rumble 500 that sounded the closest, and the sound you're hearing is just coming out of the DI directly into my interface. pretty impressed with how close that sounds. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. So let's add a pedal into the mix. The intro of NIB has this really famous wah part. If you want to go and get the original wah that Geezer used, it's kind of a collector's item, so I don't think that that's really possible for most of us. Geezer also does have a signature crybaby wah for 170 bucks, but this is 
almost the only song that he ever uses it on, which is a bit steep for just one song. I already have a Digitech-based synth wah, which is an auto wah, not like the, the foot-controlled wah that you would find on his original recording, but I think we can get close enough with that. Here's what that sounds like. It sounds coming out of the rumble, which is pretty good, but I also like to explore what you can do with just software. So let's take it into Logic and see where we can get. So Logic doesn't have a Laney copy, but the Laneys were originally based on Marshall Plexis. So we have the vintage British stack, which should be about as close as we can get. I found that I like this two burner overdrive and I used it on a split signal chain. So we've got some dry signal coming from the amp and then a B chain with just the pedal. And then after some EQ, we get pretty close to the tone he gets on Iron Man. For my amplitude preset, I've got a bi-amp setup. So I've got a clean and a dirty amp. The clean amp is going into a 115 bass cabinet and the dirty signal is going into a 212 guitar cabinet. For those of you keeping score at home, that's three speakers. Kind of my little homage to Geezer's original tone on the Black Sabbath self-titled record. Feel free to, you know, clap at this point for, for my clever references. <laughs> but anyway, I think this sounds really good for some of Geezer's heavier stuff. How to sound like Geezer Butler. Play a P bass, play directly over the end of the neck, and use a little bit of overdrive. If you think that I got close, go ahead and give this video a like. If you think that I could have done something different or better, please leave me a comment down below. If you like these presets and would like to try them out for yourself, they are available on my Patreon. Uh, I guarantee that this video is going to get demonetized because I couldn't find isolated bass tracks, so I kind of had to just use whatever was there to illustrate the differences between Geezer's tone and what I was able to come up with. Your assistance on Patreon gives me motivation and the resources to keep these going because I absolutely love making these videos for you guys. If you want to help me out and you don't really love Patreon, I also do have a merch store. You can get my logo on a phone case or a hoodie or a mask or whatever. Go check that out. Link Links down below. But most importantly, hit the subscribe button. I make a new how to sound like video every month and I'm always taking suggestions. So if there's a bass player you'd like to see me do one of these videos on, leave me a comment down below. Uh, I've got to go and get some painkillers because I've been headbanging all week long. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!